This is Roscoe of FagoLovers.net, and I am here with OG Lotus member, as many of you Juggalos might know him, Mars. How you doing, Mars? <laughs> I'm doing great. How you doing, my brother? I'm doing pretty good, homie. I want to thank you so much for coming on and talking to me on uh, on FagoLovers.net. My pleasure, man. Thank you for having me. Uh, so to start, the uh, the Juggalo world has not heard too much of Mars in the past 10 to 12 years. So can you kind of just fill us in on what you've been up to? Wow, has it, has it been that long? I think That's it has, crazy. man. It's, I think it has, yeah. Yeah, time flies, you know. What has happened? I mean, a lot. You know, my, my life completely changed about six years ago. You know, I've been doing music since I was a kid. You know, like the short version of the story would be, I was always doing music. I get a record deal. I end up touring with ICP. Jay ends up asking me to be on Dark Lotus. At the time, I was heavily into witchcraft and a lot of crazy things in my life. Ended up doing that. That kind of went sour. Then I got signed to Corn to their record label. Did a stadium tour with Corn. It was the Pop Sucks tour. I wanted to do my own thing, you know. So then I started my own record label. It was called uh, Billion Dollar Ballers. We were touring with Tech and Paul Wall and, and just kind of grinding, you know, doing our thing. And in the, in the midst of that, the life change for me was I got saved. And I don't know if you know what that means, but... You know, I was born, my father's Muslim, my mother's Catholic. I was into all type of things, you know, I was into spirit, all type of spirituality and witchcraft and just everything, just kind of looking to see, is there more to life than just this? Like, is there more to life than just chasing money and women and power than, than smoking weed and drinking? You know, so I was always kind of drawn to that. And so... At one point, you know, to, to make the story short, at one point in my life, I was going through such crazy things. If I actually told you the stories, you probably wouldn't believe me unless you've experienced um, the demonic before. But it's real. Like, believe that. It's, it's real. Those energies, those entities are real. And through a series of events, I got saved. And what that means is I give my life to Jesus. I accepted Jesus as my savior. And bro, everything changed. Like, my purpose for existence changed, you know. But the funny part of that is, when I accepted Jesus, it was at this little ghetto church, and we were actually rehearsing to go on tour with Tech and, and uh, Paul Wall. So I accepted Jesus. I didn't actually really even know what that meant. I just kind of accepted God. Like, I had been trying to do everything by my own will, my own life. And most of the times when we try to do that, everything goes wrong eventually. Because our will is selfish and filled with pride and arrogance and lust and you know what I mean? So I finally kind of came to the end of myself and I gave my life to God. So the next day when we were rehearsing and that whole tour with Tech and Paul Wah, I was having this struggle in me. It was like hearing my lyrics for the first time, hearing the things that I'm saying for the first time. And I would look at the crowd, you know, and there's hundreds to thousands of kids out there. And I felt like, for the first time I saw, like I'm just filling you with poison. Do you dig what I'm saying? And so when we got off that tour, man, I, I had a struggle in me. I'm like, man, I'm going to just give up music, you know, because everything looked different. Right. I know now what that is, you know, it's the, it's the Holy Spirit. It's a battle, you know, raging inside of you of which way to go, you know. And I decided after that tour... And after that tour, I went to visit some family in Croatia. That's where my mom's from, right next to Italy, for those that don't know. And we live in a little village, you know, and that's where I'm originally from, where I was born. And I just walked through the mountains and the hills, and I had a Bible that a stripper had gave me. <laughs> and I just read. Bro, yeah, and it's crazy, bro. And by the way, whoever's listening to this, God loves strippers. God <laughs> loves gangbangers. God loves juggalos. He is a God of love. And he wants us back. And as soon as we want to come back, he's waiting there with open arms. 
you know, to accept us and to heal us and to strengthen us and then to build us up into who we originally were meant to be according to his plan. And then he sends you back out to get more people. You follow me? So that was a huge life change for me. So I had stopped doing music. I actually went to, to a Christian rap concert and it was so horrible. It was so corny, man. <laughs> and I was like, I was sitting there and I listened to like five or six different artists. And I was hoping like, nah, one is going to come up and he's going to be amazing. And it was just so just not you know, what I wanted to do. So afterwards, you know, I prayed and I was like, Lord, please, please don't ask me to do Christian rap music. It's so lame. <laughs> you know you know what I mean? Right. And, uh, and I decided to put music to the side for a minute. I got a job as a security guard in a high rise downtown, which is crazy, bro, because I'm all tatted up. And then I, I was in a suit in a high rise. Like, it was a trip. And people would walk in and recognize me. Oh, like, dope. Yeah, you know, like, so people would walk in, you know, and they'd be like, hold up, ain't you Mars? And I'm like, ah, oh, well, you know, <laughs> you know. Right. But so, you know, and then during my walk, you know, the closer I got to God, the more I, I read and prayed and kind of just embraced this new lifestyle, I started being able to write. And my songs changed, you know. And now I realize there's a lot of amazing Christian artists out there. It's just like anything, you know, there's, you know, in regular rap, there's great rappers and then there's horrible rappers. And same in Christian music, you know, there's great artists and then there's that, ones that aren't that great. But um, then I started being able to write and I started writing songs, you know, and when I first did it, I wasn't even sure if they're Christian songs because my, my nature is a little bit aggressive, you know, and, and so I had written all these songs which ended up then being on the album called uh, Revelation, which is out, if anybody wants to hear it. And if you Google it, I have it on iTunes, so you can buy it if you, you know, want to support what I do. If not, I have it out there for free. So you, if you Google it, I'm sure you'll find the, the downloads and whatnot. But um, when I was writing that album, because some of the songs were real buck, you know, I didn't even know, is this Christian music, is it not? You know, I didn't even know what that means, you know? And, uh, bro, true story, I, I was at church one Sunday morning. Some African dude walks up to me. I'd never seen him before or since. He walks up to me and he's like, hey... God gave me a word for you. Can I tell you? And, you know, when people tell me stuff like that, I'm always suspect of it. Because I'm like, I don't know. You might tell me something weird or something crazy or whatever. Right. But I was like, go ahead, bro. You know, I'm like, go ahead. What you got to say? And he's like, God told me he picked you because you're aggressive. So don't doubt it and just finish the music you're working on. So and bro, snap. like I almost, yeah, like I got teared up, you know, because I was like, all right, I'm going to just trust this. So that's the trajectory my life took, you know. So now that's the style of music I do. We got a couple of albums, a bunch of singles that are being released this year. You know, the latest, it's called Rebel Music. You guys can download it for free and, and see the mission and the purpose of what I'm doing now. And actually, I was going to ask you, yeah. Mars, about uh, uh, Christian rap specifically. Uh, have you heard of the, the rapper Killa C? Yes, and I know Killer C. Like we were on tour a couple of times, and I and I, I remember speaking to him. We never spoke about you know Christianity, but I've heard that he got saved too. Is that true? He did. Yeah, and his new album is all uh, it's it's a Christian. Now, I haven't listened to the whole thing, but I've listened to a few songs off it, and it's actually really dope. But uh, yeah, you know, God bless him, and if anybody knows him, tell him I said what up. I send him blessings, man. I, I hope he does what what he was meant to do, like all of us. You had that uh, awakening that was on the tour with Tech and Paul Wall. Was that? Correct me if I'm wrong on this because I'm I'm not sure if this is uh, right information. But did you have a, a hit out on your life? I definitely had a situation where that's yeah, crazy story, bro. Um, I had gotten involved in some things. First off, kind of to touch on the the thing with ICP. You know, I got a lot of hate for my beef with IC, uh, ICP, and most of it I probably deserved. You know what I'm saying? Some of, maybe not all of it, but most of it I did because I was, I was in my own zone. And, and if we're living, you gotta realize we're all exactly the same. Like all of us have the same issues. You know what I mean? Mine might have been bigger, but we all have the same issues of pride and lust and arrogance. And, um, at that time, it was actually after me and ICP already kind of split. I was living out in LA and I got into, into a situation that was my fault. Like, well, I was completely to blame for the problem that I was experiencing. And the thing is, the person that tried to kind of get rid of me 
try to do it through someone that was actually a friend of mine. Oh, that doesn't follow work. that. Yeah. Now, but, but look at even before. Now looking back, I can see how God protected me in so many places. I mean, what are the chances, bro? What are the chances of someone wanting to put a hit out on you, and the person that they go to get to do it happens to be a super tight friend of yours? Right. Yeah. It's you know movie. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And actually, and that guy, the dude. He's a shooter, bro. The guy that got asked to, he didn't get asked, but the guy that, you know, got hired to get rid of me, he's also saved now. So now when we talk, and we're still friends, you know, and uh, it's crazy, bro. Like the things that he used to do for money, like this guy is no joke. He's the type of dude, like if anybody has a problem, he takes care of it. He'll go and kidnap somebody, hold them hostage for days or weeks and beat them until he gets that money. You know what I mean? Like he's wow. not a joke. It, it's not a thing of like of pretend or something like. Like it, it was serious. But he also and he's been shot a bunch of times, man. But uh, he also came to Christ. So it's crazy. So now, I mean, before our talks would be gangster talks that like we would talk about whatever you know war stories and and things like trying to show each other how tough we are or what the things we went through. And now our conversations are totally different. It's crazy how life works, you know what I mean? Now our conversations is, like, my mission right now with this album and with the rest of the music I'm doing is if you listen to it or Juggalos or whoever would listen to it, that you leave from it when you turn it off, that you're bigger and you're more blessed than you were before you listened to it. That it would strengthen you, empower you, encourage you, get you through whatever situation you're going through and connect you back with your maker. You dig? And in a serious way, not in like some corny way or some religious way, but in a for real way, in a tangible way, that when you play that music and if you say those lyrics, that it's gonna be a blessing to your life. That's my goal. My right. goal before used to be to be famous, to get money, to have power, to get women. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, purpose, the purpose and the goal has completely shifted. Well, I noticed um, in past lyrics, they almost seemed like like almost anti-theistic, some of the lyrics that you would spit. Do you regret spitting those lyrics now, or was it all just part of the plane? I regret it at first. It was almost like we all have this veil over our eyes, right? I believe that that veil is only removed in Christ, in Jesus. When the veil was removed from my eyes, when I first saw it, all the things that I did, whether it was lyrics or the things that I was involved with in my life, you know, it was embarrassing, you know, because I saw it different. I'm not embarrassed about it now because I understand it was all those things and going through those things that brought me to where I am. And now I look at it as it shows the power of God. If God could do what he did with me, he could do it with anybody. Do you know what I'm saying? So now I look at it, whether it was the lyrics or whatever I was, and I look at it as it's glory to God. It shows the power of God to be able to take someone's life and to turn it around, you know? And I don't regret it. I'm not embarrassed by it anymore. Now I look at it like, yeah, that's where I came from. This is where I'm at now. You know what I mean? And it helps me be able to speak. So, for example, like I could speak to gangbangers. I could speak to killers. I could speak to murderers. I could speak to juggalos because I've been in those situations and around those people. And when you've been there, I can speak to it. Now, had it been the other way around, let's say that I had never been involved in those situations. I could never speak to those people that are in those situations trying to get out. Right, you right. Because I would, I would have no authority. Like, how are you going to talk to me when you ain't never been in this situation? Do you know what I'm saying? How you gonna tell me not to gangbang when you ain't never been around gangbang? You follow me? So I trust that it was all God's plan. You know, even like some of the lyrics that I said it, you know, in the Dark Lotus album, that I went hard. That's where I was at the time. And looking back, you know, looking back, I think a lot of the times Christians we get it wrong. I remember one time, bro, I came out of the house and this pastor, um, way before I got saved, this pastor walks up to me, he has a bottle in his hand with a little kid. And he's like, can I talk to you for a minute and tell you about eternal life? And I'm like, yeah, man, what's up? He's like, did you know you're going to burn in hell in conscious torment for eternity? 
<laughs> unless you believe in Jesus, right? And I was like, no, I, I didn't know that. Can you show me that in the Bible? Bro, he opens up the Bible, and whatever it had said there before, I don't remember what scripture he read me, but above it, he wrote in red pen, burn in hell and conscious torment forever. <laughs> so it was in so his I, Bible. So I thought, yeah, it's like he wrote that in. Right. So I was like, you know, I thought he was playing with me, so I'm like, my man, that's not what that says. Like, you, what did it say there before? Because you wrote that in, right? He's like, well, that's what it means. And I'm like, mm. come on, man. Like, you wrote that. He snaps his Bible shut, and he's like, good luck burning, gentlemen, because I was with one of my dudes. And I was like, dang, if that's what Christianity is, I don't want it. Now you said there was a you pastor? I mean? Yeah, like it was a pastor. Like, he was evangelizing, but he was doing a horrible job. It sounds I'm like, like it. dude. Yeah, you know, so... So I had a lot of rebellion in me against that. So some of the lyrics, especially on the ICP album, came from that. Because some people get it wrong. I get it wrong. We all get it wrong. You know what I'm saying? No matter what it is, whether it's, you know, whether it's spirituality, whatever. We, there's times that we just were wrong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, like, right. We just got it twisted. So, you know. What is your thought on that then, I guess, uh, when it comes to hell and stuff like that? So obviously you don't think that people burn eternally in hell then. This would be a theology question that would, Let's you know, do it. if you wanted me to come back and actually go through it, but the, <laughs> the short explanation, the short explanation of it would be, there's basically three theological views of hell. One is, is that it's a conscious eternal torment. One is that it's extinguishing, that you would just would get extinguished. You're just no dead, torment, yeah. no, yeah. And then one is the reconciliation of all things. That God is a loving Father, that He will never forsake you, He will never abandon you, no one can take you out of His hand, and He will finish the work He started in you. He is the all-consuming fire. and But what He consumes is the lies in people. Hmm. You dig? Hmm. So those are the three theological debates. Yeah, which, you know what I mean? Which and, one are you on? I believe God is a loving Father, and He will never leave you and never forsake you. And I believe that the only way to him is through Jesus Christ. Scripture says, as in Adam, all die, so in Christ, all will be made alive. Jesus said, when I am lifted up on the cross, I will draw all mankind to myself. That's my conviction. You dig? A loving mm-hmm. Father would not burn people for no reason. God doesn't do things for no reason. He's not a tormentor. You dig? I've heard the explanation that the um, the burning in hell is basically it's a punishment, right? If it's burning for all eternity, forever, it's not really a punishment. It's more of like vengeance. Exactly. And look at us being sinful humans. I think we all agree we're, we're sinful, right? I mean, we lie, we steal, we manipulate. So we can agree, I think, even whether you believe in Christianity or not, or God or not, I think generally we could agree we're all sinful. You know, some people are crazy amounts of sinful, and some people are a little sinful, but we all lie. You know, we've all stolen. We all do these things, right? We might not be a murderer or something. We've experienced doing something that is sinful. Now watch, if we being sinful, if let's say if me and you are in heaven, right, and we see in hell... Oh, someone horrible like Hitler and he's burning consciously tormented screaming going crazy blah, blah, right how long would we be able to deal with that a year two years In, until we were like hey God like what's up like, <laughs> I think he's learned his lesson like, yeah just get rid of him so you know and, and I think you know that in a way that that makes God that gives a bad reputation with God. I because agree. He didn't make us so he could torture us. He made us in the beginning in Genesis, God says, Let us make man in our image. And that's why we're here, to be made in his image. And it also says the word that goes out of his mouth will not come back void, which means what he says he will accomplish. You dig? So whoever's listening to this or you or me, we're all at a different phase of that being created in his image. The sooner we can get out of the way and the sooner we submit to Jesus as our Lord, the sooner we can be made into his image. You follow me? And it's still a war, man. Like, it's not like, oh, if you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, life is all peachy. Nah, that's when the war starts. I'm just going to ask some generalized questions about 
your beliefs, if that's cool. Yeah, bro. Are you a young Earth creationist? I'm not. And the way the way that we could explain that is this. There's things that's called closed fist Christianity, and then there's open fist Christianity, right? What closed fist means is these are the things that, to call yourself a Christian, you have to believe it. And there's no swaying from it. In order to be called a Christian, this is non-negotiable. You follow me? Right. So here's the things that are that are closed fist Christianity. Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. He was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life and he died on the cross for our sins, for all of humanity. He was raised again the third day. If we believe in him, we have eternal life. That is closed fist Christianity. There's no debating that in order like to call yourself a Christian. There's stuff that would be considered open fist Christianity that the Bible is not clear on. And so we could debate it, but that's not its purpose, right? Like so, the age of the earth you know, and, and stuff like that, right? Yeah, like how old is the planet? We really don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, so to make that a sticking point is kind of uh, divisive. Really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter for our salvation. Whether the planet is a billion years old or whether the planet is a couple thousand years old, doesn't matter for your salvation. You know what I mean? So the open fist stuff. We can debate it, so we could talk about it, and you know. And I love science. A lot of people think that if you're a Christian or if you believe in God, that means that you're kind of like a dummy, or you've never experienced science, you've never looked into things. It's the exact opposite, bro. For for me, it's the exact opposite. I love science, you know. And the more that I get into science, the more it proves God. There's a quote, and it's something to the effect that at the first sip of science men become atheists but mm. waiting for you at the bottom of the glass is god and it's true when you see the complexity of creation the complexity of our planet plus the solar system and then when you go smaller the complexity of our body the complexity of a cell the complexity of dna it is a planned thing it takes way more faith to think this could happen with no intelligence than it does to realize this is designed. You think that? You know uh, I mean? do, so, are you? Uh, do you believe in evolution? Then, do you think that God created us through those means, or or what's your views on that? Well, it's kind of getting away you, from music a little bit. Sorry, but yeah, sorry, sorry, guys. Like, hope you're like, what? We <laughs> no, want to hear about. <laughs> I love this we'll, shit. We'll so get sorry. To it. We'll get to the other stuff. So, scientifically, there's something called the Cambrian explosion, which is how evolution is taught is that it's a tree and it like we came from uh simple cells and you know what i mean and then it kind of evolved into a tree of species that is scientifically incorrect there's a thing called the cambrian explosion where at once all these species appear on the timeline it is not a tree it was like a, a hundred million year span the cambrian explosion it wasn't yeah. just at once but yeah and i know what you're talking no about it's it's not, bro. It's not a hundred million year like space. You know what I mean? It's. I don't know the exact. I don't want to misquote the time. I don't know the exact time right now, but it's a very short time period. It is not the time period. Or here, think of it like this. Let's back up from it, right? Because people will be like, no, you know, we we evolved from like monkey-like humans. Well, well, well. Let's back up. So let's say, where did that start? So let's let's go back and say monkeys and then some type of lizard, then a frog, then a fish, and then you go to a single cell, and then you go to the original thing. What did we start from if we were to believe in evolution? We started from carbon, dead, lifeless carbon. We didn't come just from a, a human-like, an ape-like ancestor. Go farther. Tell me how much faith it takes to believe that. Pick up a rock. Like if you ever are somewhere where they have carbon rocks and look at that rock and then get some water and look at those two things and think, could this with no intelligence whatsoever somehow have created human beings and all life forms? And not, not to mention that, but in our DNA, which is the most complex computer program, we don't have computer programs as complex as human DNA. We right. have binary codes. The human DNA is four bits. And it can be read forward and backwards. And out of those billions of pieces of information, if one is out of place, the whole thing doesn't work. 
so this is where evolution falls apart because evolution is a theory right so the theory of evolution falls apart on this there is never ever been an example of a mutation adding information to the DNA you follow me so watch I'm gonna say that again there's never ever been an observation or evidence or proof of a genetic mutation adding information to the DNA what it would mean like this you know for everybody that knows how computers work you know how the computer programming is complex now imagine you opened up the computer programming and you let your cat just walk over your keyboard in hopes that it would improve your computer it's never gonna happen you know what I'm saying it's, it's mathematically impossible it's an impossibility so it takes way more faith to believe that than to believe there's an intelligent creator we might not know him yet it might be confusing but he's there and he's waiting to be known and he's constantly calling us and bro and he lets us do whatever we want so if you don't want to go like you don't want to know him he lets you now nah. go ahead and try to try to find answers for yourself and drugs and alcohol and money and power and love and whatever it may be and one day when you realize there's no answers there you will come back and he will be there for you because he loves sinners bro and you could call me on this bro hell is filled I'm, I'm sorry heaven is filled with sin only sinners get to heaven bro you dig what I'm saying Jesus loves sinners he gave his life for sinners you know and so I think a lot of times we've been told it the wrong way like fix yourself up and then no like you can never fix yourself up it's God that fixes you so if there's anybody out there listening to this and you know they feel condemned or you know religious people have put you down for who you are or what you've done the things you've gone through and I mean anything you might have done you're forgiven in Christ you're forgiven now he wants you back and when you come back he will heal you he will restore you and he will reveal to you the original reason of why he made you and what your purpose is in this life hey Myers we're gonna get on back on the subject of music <laughs> all right we probably lost a lot of people but let's come back <laughs> all right what was your opinion of uh, ICP's message that was put, put forth on the sixth Joker's card where, where he says Mars you never were Lotus and you noticed yeah. that no the um, <laughs> like on ICP's sixth Joker's card the Wraith on uh, the last song uh -huh. they revealed that the carnival is God and may all juggalos find him what was your opinion on, on them releasing that message I don't know I don't know if I really have an opinion because I you know I haven't spoke to them in so long bro so I don't know where his heart is I don't know if he if he meant that. I don't know what God is doing in his life, you know. So I don't want to belittle it if he's genuine, you know. Right. Um, at the same time, I feel like the only truth in this life is Jesus. So if we're genuinely searching, all roads lead to him. So I trust and I have faith that if Jay and Shaggy and whoever else, whatever juggalos might have been influenced by that, if they're genuinely searching for God, God will reveal himself, you know? So I'll tell you, you know, my hope is that he was genuine. And my hope is, is that that's where, where he is being led, you know? And so maybe I'll leave it at that, you know? I would love to talk to him. I would love to see where he's at, you know? I'm, I'm sure we're both different people than we were at the time when we got when we were beefing for for whatever reason you know i'm sure we both grown and matured and so right. i would be open to talking to him i would be open to speaking life to him and blessing him you know and uh, and seeing where he's at but as far as like what did he mean by it was it true or not i don't know but i hope it was so i did listen to that new rebel music mixtape congrats on that man because it's awesome thank you bro I'm not as uh, explicit as some of the music i listen to I figured it was a little bit safer. <laughs> yeah, there's no cussing, man. Like, I don't cuss. I don't degrade women, you know, and there's none of that. And you know what's weird, though? Like, a couple of the songs, I've had people hit me back up and be like, man, I listened to this, and th the whole time I thought you were just cussing and, you know what I mean, saying all these things. And he's like, then I started paying attention, and I was like, wow, he's not doing any of that. 
Yeah, you yeah. Know? So different people listen to music for different reasons. Some people let the beat just bang out. Some people listen to the flow, and then some people pay attention to the lyrics. Well, even on that album, man, like uh, the beat and the flow, it almost seems like it, it could be one of those type of songs where you are talking about, you know, gang banging and, and everything else. But the message coming across is totally different than than what you would expect in in that type of music. Yeah, and you know, and that's kind of my goal. My goal is because hip hop is a language, you know, and bro, and I got to tour the world and I, and I got to see it, man, like kids listening to hip-hop in all over the world in hungary and italy and in sweden and you know and now it's a worldwide thing and it's it's a language you know and certain people relate more to a certain language and so to me what hip-hop is now is a means for me to share a message you know the message is no longer how cool i am and how you know what i'm saying how raw i am you know what i mean it's all about me that's not the message. The message is there's something completely different, and I'm just using the media or the platform of hip hop to spread that message. Any chance of re-releasing any of your old albums, your old discography? Probably not. I mean, I took it off. I think I took a little more she off too. Yeah, it's not the up only there, thing no. that's yeah. I took it all down, bro, and I struggled with that for a couple years. You know, like because it was up, and I was still making money off of it, but I felt like it was poison. You know. And uh, I'm like, dang, what do I do? And then one day, like, I just decided I'm gonna, I'm gonna just take it down, you know. And bro, that you want to talk about a humbling experience? What I worked on for, you know, 15, 20 years of my life, just gone. Right. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's something that I put so much time into every day. I wasn't like a part-time rapper type of thing. You know what I mean? I like I worked on music every day. You know, and I produced music and I tried to write songs that were different and powerful. And you know, and then all of a sudden, I take it all away. You know, I took it all down, man. That was fun, uh, bro. Wow, I you know? couldn't even imagine, man. All right, Marge, just a couple more questions here before we take off. Kind of a little bit over the time, but that's all right. Did you consider yourself a juggalo, or do you still consider yourself yep, a yep, juggalo? I'm, I'm re- I didn't even know what juggalos were, bro. When I got on a tour with ICP, it was because the label that I was on, they were looking for a tour for me. They called me up. I didn't even know who ICP was. They're like, there's a group called the Insane Clown Posse. I just asked, is it rap? You know, is it hip hop? And they're like, yeah, they're a rap. They're a rap group. And I'm like, all right, cool. So then I looked them up. I'm like, oh, okay. This looks interesting. So the first time I'd ever even heard a juggalo song or icp was at the first show that right. we did you know so i had no idea about that culture i had nothing to do i came from a different culture but i came from a chicago gang culture so it was a little bit different you know what i mean and so you know when it first started i was very heavily embraced by juggalos like and that was a problem and that was one of the issues with jay and me. juggalos he eventually loved you. called me yeah and I wasn't signed to his label, you know? And he knew I was already signed. When he asked me to do uh, Dark Lotus, he knew I was already signed to another label. And the label I was on actually was cool enough to let me do it. You right. know what I mean? But then what happened is, then when Dark Lotus was released, he said every time he went on the internet, anytime he you know, spoke about Juggalos, anytime he did interviews, all the questions were about me. And he's like, you're not even, you're not even on our label, man. Like, this can't happen. You know <laughs> what I mean? And I'm like, well... What do you want me to do? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. You asked me to be, to be on this, you know? And so that's where the tension between me and him had started, you know? So I didn't even know about Juggalos, bro. I know that I got love for Juggalos. I will bless them. You know, I know a lot of them hated me and they didn't even know why. It's just one of those things where because I was beefing with Jay, they stayed loyal and it's cool. I ain't even mad at at the ones that did that. I know a lot of Juggalos did not do that when I would still do shows or when I would see Juggalos at tech shows. I got crazy love, bro. They showed me crazy amounts of love, you know? And I appreciate that. And that's one of the reasons that I really am open to doing this interview or, or doing doing whatever in the Juggalo culture because I pray my music blesses them. You dig what I'm saying? I'm not doing this so then Juggalos will think I'm a great rapper. I'm doing this in the in the hopes that Juggalos listen to whether it's the mixtape or the albums we got coming out and that it blesses their life. And you could even still hate me. I don't care as long as it blesses your life. Do you know what I mean? All right, homie. So, Any final words that you have for the Juggalos for all the people listening before we take off here? 
Yeah, man. You guys are loved. God loves you. He's calling you back. He's going to chase you, and you will never get away from him. And he will finish the work he started in you guys. So God bless you guys. I, I look forward to, to, to seeing some of y'all, you know, again, whether it's at shows or whether we, we talk on the Internet or where, wherever. But that's my message. You are loved more than you ever imagined. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Mars. Yes, sir.